I want everyone to just imagine for a minute that you're taken hostage. You and a lot of people you know, you're all taken hostage. You're put in this room. Someone locks the door. They have the only key. And they put you in this room and they tell you, we're only going to let you out of this room and get back to your jobs and your lives and your social activities when every person in this room takes this vaccine and gets this shot. You have some people in the room, imagine, that are like, oh, I'm fine with that. Like you, you say, is it safe? You say it's okay, cool. It's safe. Then I'll, I'll take it. Then you have other people in the room who are like, hell no, I'm not getting this shot and I'm certainly not giving it to my kids. And then you start asking each other, well, why, why is that? And you start understanding, you know, some in the room have histories of autoimmune disease that lie, lie dormant in the body until you inject something into their body. Or some people in the room have heart conditions or some people in the room just simply live non-toxic chemical free lifestyles and they take care of their health in other ways and you start to understand that but imagine that then the the hostage taker comes into the room and starts whispering you know the only way out of this is if you all do it and and that person is actually if they don't do it then they're endangering your life and your safety And then the people in the room, you start turning against each other and you're like, take this vaccine. It's the only way out. And the people are like, no, it's not like this is my health decision. No matter what, like no matter what they hold hostage in my life, I'm not going to compromise on this. And you turn against each other to the point of, you know, cannibalizing each other. What if somebody in the room just went like time out? What if we all figured out a way to take the key back from the person who held us hostage here in the first place? Okay, let's get banned from YouTube, shall we? Uh, So I originally came into this podcast episode, I wrote down an outline with a lot of stats, a lot of like comparing state by state vaccination rates versus hospitalization and death rates. Um, trying to like pull different examples of like, well, what about the ages of those, you know, populations in those states, you know, cause we know that, um, you know, higher risk populations are a little bit different than lower risk populations or should be. And I'm kind of scrapping this whole outline <laughs> because what I really want to get to here is less of data and making my case for my own opinions about the vaccine and more make the case for the principle upon which I try to make my decisions. Because look, I believe that every person should have a right to not only their own medical decisions, but also their own, like which data sources they trust. Um, I don't trust certain data sources. And and let me back up. So the very, very first time that my eyes like kind of squinted open a little bit to maybe I will consider digging a little bit deeper than, you know, the, the headlines I hear, you know, what I hear most of my community around the facts around COVID. Um, and it was when I started hearing that the government was mandating vaccines for their employees. And I had been, you know, I had been double vaccinated at this point and I had gotten sick too from it. And I still, I still turned to my husband and I was like, that's insane. Like I, I am all about I am all about, you know, the vaccine at that time I was, I'm all, I'm all about getting it. Like we have it, like I am full support of getting it. I believe it, I I believed at the time that it worked. Uh, but telling my neighbors and my friends that they have to, in order to have a livelihood, like holding our livelihoods hostage. And since then we've done like in States like New York, you know, certain, even kids as young as five years old can't go into certain public indoor you know, dining places, entertainment places. I mean, we don't see a ticker every day of how suicides and mental health problems are on the road. We don't see a ticker every day tracking that epidemic and talking about like, what's the way out of this mental health crisis and these, this increase in suicide rates, even though like, if you look at their, you know, you can look at readings and books from, you know, writings of people who in their last days before committing suicide, a lot of the common threat in some of those writings is, economic concerns about like, how am I going to provide for my family? I feel like I'm a failure. Um, so we're not tracking, you know, that epidemic we're tracking, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic and we see a ticker every day of, you know, all of this data around, um, positive, uh, COVID rates around, uh, hospitalizations and deaths. And I care about that stuff. I, you know, think that all life is sacred, you know, our lives are sacred 
And, um, you know, if I feel symptoms, whether I choose to get vaccinated or not, if I feel like symptoms so much as a cold, um, I'm not going to go, you know, walk in my grandma's house and cough all over her. You know, I'm, I'm mindful of other people's health, but you know, kids as young as five, not being able, you know, in some cases to participate in certain school activities. Uh, and we, even though we know these things impact far more than mental health than our financial health, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at what's good for all of our society through one singular lens. And I think that that's a problem. Uh, and I think that ultimately the principle I'm talking about here is really, why are we not looking at who's holding us hostage and taking back power from them? Uh, because once we gave them that key, now we're seeing it's really hard to get that key back. Uh, and we have people, I think the reason I wanted to record this episode is because I, I know that, you know, in some pockets of the U S there are it, kind of our confidence in vaccines is waning a little bit, but there are also pockets of the U S like you look at California and many, if not most, I can't say that it's most, but many, many, many people in California, just as an example, really strongly believe that vaccines are still the way out of this thing. And they believe that if people don't choose to be vaccinated, they must not care about their children's health, or they must not care about other people's health, or they must not, you know, care about our society. Um, you know, and I have a problem personally with my neighbor being forced to make um, a medical decision. The reason that that really hit a nerve with me in the beginning is just because I know like any other medical decision that allergy medicine or Tylenol as harmless as those things, as innocuous as those things may seem that for certain people, they're not good for them. That allergy medicine for certain people, you know, whether they have heart conditions and they're predisposed to heart events, adverse heart events, uh, can't take certain allergy medications or that if you have a particular lifestyle, such as if you're a really heavy drinker, you probably shouldn't take allergy medicines because they're really dangerous to mix. So something as innocuous as that, I know that a surgery, an open heart surgery isn't recommended for every single heart patient because there's this whole risk benefit weighing that needs to happen on the part of medical professionals and on the part of us as the ultimate you know, patients and making decisions for our own health. You know, how at risk is this, is this heart, con- how, how much of a risk to my health and my life is this heart condition versus, you know, for my age, my weight, my lifestyle, my, my existing conditions, how dangerous is the, sur- the open heart surgery? And so I find out odd that vaccines, which are another medical intervention, I find it odd that a lot, it's widely accepted that it's a one size fits all approach that someone with pre-existing conditions or certain just lifestyles or uh, just kind of like uh, their philosophy of how to live a, a healthy lifestyle for themselves and their families is criticized when it comes to vaccines. Um, I think that's odd. I think it's just really strange. And I think as far as the point I think that where where the COVID-19 vaccine conversation, there's a little bit of a distinction that I, I do recognize is, um, you know, for a lot of our medical decisions, we understand like we're ultimately responsible for our own health and we're accountable to our own health decisions, you know, for ourselves and in many cases for our families, for our children. Um, so I understand that, you know, these hostage takers have, have whispered into the room to, especially to the population who's okay with getting a vaccine, like, good job, we're going to give you a card, we're going to let you do a few more things than these other people on the other side of the room, but you're still not getting out of the room because those people, like, they're put, they, they tell us that our, we're putting each other in danger if we choose not to vaccinate ourselves. And I'm not going to get into the data and how, in my mind, the data doesn't support that. I'm just going to say that I, I don't think that demand it's right to demand that other people make a decision for your uh, their own personal health decision based on your health and what you be- how you perceive that will impact your own health um we don't do that and you know we don't expect that in other aspects of you know our health and our lifestyles um we think it's perfectly acceptable for people to drink and even to drink to excess if that's what they choose i think that's fine knowing full well that those people could also choose to get behind a wheel and kill somebody Um, I don't expect other people to get a certain medical intervention for my health and safety. First of all, because I don't believe the data supports that it does anything for my health and safety. But I also, I think that as humans, we're ultimately, 
we are always going to look out for our personal health before we think I'm not going to make a personal health decision based on hmm, what, what is going to benefit society the most here. I'm going to make a, a health decision based on what I think is right for my health and my life. Do I think this is going to put my life at risk or not? Do I think this is going to be good for my health or bad for my health? Um, you know, and whatever whatever data I, I have to support that, or even if I choose not to go any further and get any data to the contrary of my decision, it's, it's my health and that's my right. And I think that suggesting otherwise, I don't think that that shows concern for other humans. I think that's just projecting your own opinions onto other people. I also... I just want to recognize because when I was going to, I was going through data and I got data from a lot of different sources, some of whom I trust more than others. But, um, I think a lot of this gets back to, you know, who we choose to trust. And I think we all have a right to trust whoever we want. You know, um, I personally don't trust, um, pharmaceutical companies to a huge degree because I know that, um, they don't have to be transparent in their data. <laughs> um, there are a lot of other things that have led me to like take ph- what pharmaceutical companies say with a grain of salt. It's not as if I say everything they say is a lie. I actually find what's more dangerous is, you know, liars who just lie, you know, through their teeth are, and it's really obvious. I mean, I can, you can readily recognize those. It's the liars who use a degree of truth and spin it and entangle it with other things and then have a moment to, you know, package it in the way that they want to and then present it to you. Those are the liars I find the most uh, cunning. Um, and that's how I view the pharmaceutical industry because they don't they don't have to publish, you know, raw data. They don't have to. Um, they get to, behind the scenes, conduct studies and create data, essentially, in whatever framework and parameters they want to to tell a story that benefits them. And then what we are privy to, not just as a general public, but also our physicians are privy to, is the analysis of the data that they choose to publish. And that's always, always going to be something that um, benefits them financially. It's going to tell a story to their benefit. Not going to release a drug and say, oh, these studies say that it's just, it's not very effective. It's definitely not more effective than the last one we released that does the same thing. And this one causes, you know, potentially more adverse health events. Um, you don't, you don't see that. (laughs) You just don't. Um, so that's why I don't, you know, one of the reasons that I take what I see from the pharmaceutical industry with a tiny, tiny, tiny grain of salt. I also take, um, you know, if you Google any of these things, just as a heads up, in case you're not aware, if you Google any of these things, your first 50 to hundred search results are going to be about like, you know, this morning, let's see, what is one of the things that I Googled? I Googled something about, let's, see, let's just see, like what, let me just tell you my layman's story. I just I Googled vad, vaccine adverse reactions just to see what pops up. And you have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll through, you know, 50 organizations and news media outlets who are, whose primary source of revenue is from the pharmaceutical industry. So it's not that I think all of these media outlets are telling all lies all the time. It's just that when I see something And I think what I don't see from them is also very telling. Um, You know, if you look at, I've I've heard from real, actual people. If you can't trust any evidence in the media or whatever, if you whatever you choose to trust or not trust, I think it's pretty true that you can trust the evidence in your own life and what you observe and what you don't observe. I don't see students in our schools dropping dead by the dozens from COVID. Um, I have known people whose health this vaccine has wrecked. Um, I have known people who have had the vaccine. They're just fine. I have, you know, known people through the grapevine who have died from COVID. Like those are things that I think are real because they're evidence that I see in my own life. But when I Google it, I don't, I don't see the evidence that I'm seeing in my own life reflected necessarily. I have to scroll through, you know, 50 to hundred news media outlets. Fact, it's like all fact checking, fact checking, fact checking. This is a myth. This is a myth. Here's what the CDC says. Here's what this organization says. And 75% of all TV revenue, this is just fact. 75% is the latest number. It used to be a smaller percentage since COVID. Surprise, it's gone up to about 75% of all, not just news media, all TV revenue comes from the pharmaceutical companies. And uh, some, you know, executives at these news companies have come out and said, and and I will fire 
uh, a TV host who says something that will hurt the pharmaceutical company's business. For example, doing a story on adverse vaccine reactions, you know, just as one example, you don't, it's why you don't really see that. Um, so that's the reason I take, you know, even search results on the internet with a grain of salt because I'm seeing oh, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, Fox News, like all of these, you know, conservative leaning and liberal leaning uh, uh, mainstream outlets who I know like 75, roughly 75% of their revenue is coming from the pharmaceutical company. So I'm going to take what I see around COVID and health in general with a very, very tiny grain of salt, but you have to dig. And I think that that's one of the problems too. Most people either don't have time or don't find it important enough to make time to go through the hundredth <laughs> search result to try to weed out, you know, and to find, you know, just one analysis from somebody who isn't being puppeteered by the pharmaceutical industry. It's hard. It takes time. It takes effort. And most Americans are just trying to get by and they don't have time for that, you know, and to that, not to sound like a crazy conspiracy conspiracy theorist, but in that respect, it really, when you think about it, benefits the pharmaceutical industry if we are poor, if we are having mental health challenges. I, I remember when I was at the, when my mental illness in the form of alcoholism and depression was at its worst, I wasn't digesting any, I had no time to do research. I had no time to really pay attention to anything. And so what I would have told you is the truth is whatever I could pair it from the headlines I saw in the mainstream media. Um, so I think it benefits the pharmaceutical. I, I'm not saying that's their goal. I'm not even, I'm not even putting that forth and suggesting that that is their goal. I'm saying it's just inherent to, it's just inherent to this reality. Like that the pharmaceutical industry benefits from us not, having time, not having energy, not having a taste for digging. A quick email that I got this morning, the subject line, and this is from the practice where our daughter's pediatrician practices. We like him. He's a nice guy. We don't necessarily want to switch pediatricians. You know, that's a big hassle. It's hard enough to find one. But this is from his practice. Dear parent, the subject line is COVID-19 vaccine now available for your child. Dear parent, We are now offering the COVID-19 vaccine by appointment only for our pediatric patients ages six months and above. We are offering the Moderna vaccine for all patients. And that's going to be a no thank you for us. We've already made that decision. The sad reality is people would look me in the eye probably these days and tell me I'm a bad parent or that not vaccinating them means I don't love my child. I've seen that one on social media. That's a fun one. Um, or that, you know, at the very least that I'm, you know, dumb and ignorant to the facts. A lot of people would tell me that because a lot of people really do believe that. Um, and this, this email, it's, it's really nice. We are offering the vaccine, you know, we're offering it. You can take it if you want. You can give it to your kids if you want. Um, but I've seen how this goes down. And so I got this email and immediately pretty much started internet searching for pediatricians in this area and asking around some friends, um, you know, other pediatricians who won't, you know, pressure us every time we go in. Because when I go in, I just want to know about, you know, my child's health. Are they healthy? You know, are they growing properly? Are there any issues? I want to be able to take them somewhere if they're sick and we need medical help. Um, I don't want to be pressured over and over again. Um, and guilted, um, because that's what happens. Um, this will quickly, I'm telling you, this will quickly turn into, this is what we're recommending. And possibly even if you don't give your kids this vaccine, I can't see you because this is, this is what our physicians are being taught. Remember vaccines are a medical intervention, but unlike other medical interventions, they are somehow given this pristine, untouchable, angelic, you know, halo. All vaccines are medical advancements. They are good for all people all the time. Um, risks are so extremely rare that it makes zero sense for you to not vaccinate your children. No, mind you that the vaccine schedule has since you were a kid tripled. <laughs> and no, mind you that over that course of time, our kids have gotten less healthy, not more healthy. But no mind you those things. Um, 
you know, this is an untouchable medical intervention. It is treated differently than other medical interventions. And I think that's the case. I believe, based on what I have seen and based on my gut instincts as a parent, that that is pushed so hard because it ultimately benefits pharmaceutical companies for us to believe that. I would never look another parent in the eye, even, even with all of those opinions that I just stated and all of those conclusions that my husband and I have come to as parents. I would never look another parent in the eye and say, because you are giving the COVID vaccine to your child, you don't love them, you're a bad parent, or even you know that you're ignorant and you're stupid. Let me just speak to parents for a minute. You are doing the best you can. We are walking COVID aside. Even before COVID, we're walking through a minefield as parents. It's hard to make decisions. And when you do make decisions, for example, you know, my husband and I are, we're still in the process of, you know, getting our hands on every piece of opinion and research, biased and unbiased about vaccines and vaccines for children and each individual one. Do we need to do some of, do we want to do some of them? Do we want to do none of them? Do we you know, want to do all of them? Um, these are the questions that we've asked ourselves because we know that as parents, we're ultimately accountable. And if we're going to weigh those risks and benefits, you know, if we're going to choose not to vaccinate our, our children, for example, we also have to take accountability for what are other ways? What are we going to do about daycare and school? What are we going to do about, um, you know, uh, preventive health? What are we going to do, you know, ultimately, if our kids get a preventable disease, that's on us as parents. Do we accept that, uh, the weight of that, you know, responsibility, knowing that, you know, we believe the risks of the vaccine outweigh the risks of a potential, potentially getting a preventable, uh, condition. Um, and that's where we've personally landed that we don't want to put, we, we believe that no amount of formaldehyde is safe for our kids. We believe that, you know, no amount of chemicals and toxins, um, is, ultimately like something that we want to that we feel good about doing for the sake of you know preventing the rarest of the rare diseases that's where we've personally landed but even with all of that I think that other parents should be able to come to their own conclusions too and should be able to do so without the shame that's heaped upon us in this society um I uh I have a good a good friend she's Oh, man, one of the coolest people I know. Um, she was pressured years ago into getting the HPV vaccine. Whole other topic. But the the story here is she was pressured appointment after appointment after appointment by her OBGYN to the point where it got like pretty, um, pretty intense as far as the pressure and the emotional manipulation. And she was guilted, essentially shamed really into getting the HPV vaccine, even though she wasn't sexually active, even, you know, with all of her pushback, um, her OBGYN, um, scared and guilted her into getting it. And what she didn't know at the time was that lupus runs in her family and she's genetically predisposed to, uh, lupus and that it was likely already there, kind of lying dormant somewhere, um, just waiting for a trigger to, you know, put it into you know, full action in her body. And that's what happened. Um, and she has since had enormous, enormous health repercussions that have not just impacted her health, they've impacted her whole lifestyle, you know, where she goes, how often she can be in the sun, what she can eat, uh, her social life, um, it has Im impacted her financially, obviously. She's, she was intensely traumatized from that, um, has a hard time trusting authority and medical professionals, um, has really lost faith in the people that you know, she thought were her advocates. And the really sad thing about that story is that other people would look at her in the face and if she said, the HPV vaccine caused my lupus, would laugh her out of the room. Despite all the evidence in her life to support that, would laugh at her and say, you're crazy. The HPV vaccine doesn't cause lupus. It just doesn't. That's the world we live in. And I think that that's sad because um, I don't think that everything Every, every chemical, every toxin, every medical intervention is safe for all people, no matter what. And that's even setting aside some, some research that I've done that says exactly the opposite. Um, let's just set aside all of that because those, those are my own research and those are my own opinions. And I want to make sure that I keep, I keep getting off track and talking about that and rather than the principle of don't forget that as we're locked in this room, 
and held hot our, our livelihoods, our social life, our mental health, our kids' well-being, all of these things are being held hostage. Meanwhile, we're being told by the hostage takers that we're making these de decisions. They're for your benefit. It's for your own good children. You know, we'll let you... Do you remember back in the old days when you were in school and, you know, one person in the class, the, the lesson you learned where, you know, if one person in the class can ruin it for all of you. Like if, if one person in the class doesn't obey rules and do well with this activity, we're going to take it away for everybody. That's what's happening today in our society, by the way, <laughs> is we're being told, like, children, you can have your jobs back, you can have your economy back, you can, you know, eat again, you can, you know, all of you people starving, you don't have to starve anymore, all of you people suicidal, you don't have to be suicidal anymore. Once you comply with this medical intervention, that is the way out. And we're missing the fact that the way out is to, there are more of us than there are of them. I'm not suggesting anarchy, I'm suggesting let's, Let's use our vote. Let's use our voices. Let's advocate um, to our, you know, use our voices with our legislators. Use our voices, most importantly, with each other to support each other and go, I may make di different decisions than you do medically. I may believe different facts than you do. I may trust different sources than you do. But I still respect your right to live in a free society, you know, regardless of the medical decisions that you make. There are more of us than there are of them. Let's just take back the key rather than get in this, this cannibalization of our friends and our neighbors and our communities over you're not making the decisions I think you should make. Um, it's, it's, that's the broader principle that I wanted to talk about today. I hope I haven't gotten too off track. I probably have because I'm an emotional human being. And then I start talking about all of my, I start talking too openly about all of my own experience, experiences and opinions, but there it is. Uh, I'm going to leave this here. And if you stuck with me, great job. <laughs> I'm really impressed. And if you can't find me on YouTube or certain platforms, I'm this podcast is on Spotify. That's always a safe bet. Um, and uh, we'll see if this episode or the whole thing is taken down off of YouTube. But um, fingers crossed. We'll hope for the best. We'll hope that you know, because only like 12 people are listening to this that I'm allowed to exist. <laughs>